Well, here we are, day two of our 40-day media fasting and prayer. And I just want to say, if this is your second day watching and partnering with us, then I want to commend you already because you're already on the right track. Hey, only 38 days left. Let's just go for it. Let's just finish this. Let's do it the right way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as you know, every day of these 40 days, we are looking at a particular passage of Scripture. I've chosen, I believe the Lord helped me to choose these 40 particular passages that we would focus on each one in a day. And yesterday we went over 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. So today we have Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 8. There are many good verses in this chapter, but I really want to focus down on, zero down on verses 6 through 8. So Father, we thank you for your time the, to be here with us today. Oh Lord, by your Spirit, speak to us from the Word of God. May each one us, of us hear exactly what you're saying to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here we go. Isaiah 55, and starting at verse 6, reading down through verse 8. Here's what it says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. So we'll just stop there. But notice how this famous passage, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, is connected to this uh, other part, seek the Lord while he may be found. So I want you to see this, that God has thoughts that are higher than our thoughts. God has ways that are higher than our ways. So when he's telling us to do something, we need to just do it. We need to not argue. We need to not um, wonder if it's the right thing. No, we need to just do what the Lord says to do because God's thoughts are higher and his ways are higher. He always knows what to do. So let's go over this now and then we're going to pray through it as we will be doing all throughout this 40 days. And I want you to join with me. Don't just listen, please. But I, I call upon you to walk through this with me. And as I begin to be vocal and prayerful, you also just uh, speak out and verbalize what the Lord uh, is speaking to us about here. So here we go. Ready? Verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. What does that mean? You can't just decide when you're going to call God like a fire truck. Hey, just stay over there in the station locked up. But when we need you, come right now. That's not the way God works. No, he doesn't want to be uh, just an emergency vehicle. No, God wants to be our God. God wants to be the one who directs us. He wants us to recognize that we are completely dependent on him. We need him. And so there's a time where God will not answer. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 1, uh, the Bible says, Because I, I called you and you refused, I stretched out my hand, but you didn't regard, because I kept calling and calling and you wouldn't have anything to do with my wisdom. He says, then I'm going to laugh at your calamity and I'll mock when your terror comes. God says, if you don't have time for me and this goes on uh, consistently and persistently, then God says, then there's going to come a time where then I don't have time for you. I don't have time to help you because you proved to me that you really don't want me in your life. Well, folks, that's not us. Come on, say that with me. Just say that. That's not me. No, that's not me. So seek the Lord while he may be found. Folks, thank God it's right now. He may be found right now. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Oh, thank God he's near. The Lord has come near to us. He's leaning into us. He's calling us to this media fast. He's calling us to sacrifice our flesh. He's calling us to press into to him. What does that mean? He's near. He's, he's wanting us to come. 
This is a privilege. This is an honor that the creator of the universe would be wanting us to come near to him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Not just uh, reduce the amount of wickedness. No, let the wicked forsake his way. I mean, just abandon it completely. Run away from it. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Boy, if you've got some sin in your life, everybody has a little, some sin that we have to repent over. But there are some folks that still have some significant sins. I remember when I had some significant sin in my life. I mean, bondages, thick bondages that I was so ashamed of and embarrassed of. And you know, the Lord was not shaming me, but he was saying, I need you to repent. I need you to come to me. I need you to press into me, seek me, continue to tell me you don't want that in your life anymore. Continue to call upon me to deliver you. See, God is wanting us to press away from the sin and toward him. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, his thoughts. What does that mean? These thoughts that come to mind, Some believers have allowed these thoughts to just run rampant in their minds. Wrong thoughts, wrong thinking, sometimes perverse, sometimes critical, sometimes angry, sometimes selfish, sometimes fantasizing about things they ought not. I mean, thoughts go all different uh, directions, but God says, look, the unrighteous needs to forsake his thoughts, forsake his thoughts. And so we need to renounce those, and we'll do it in prayer in just a little bit. But it's important that you get this out of your mouth, that you're renouncing those wrong thoughts that you've allowed to continue to roll around in your mind. He goes on to say, let him return to the Lord. Somebody said, well, I didn't leave the Lord. Oh, yes, if you allowed this in your life, these things don't happen in the presence of God. These things don't happen in the will of God. So when you allow those things, you've allowed yourself to veer off. And so the Lord's saying, you need to forsake those things and you need to return to the Lord. And what will the Lord do? It goes on to say, the Lord will crush him. (laughs) No, thank God he could, but that's not what it says. It says, and he will have mercy on him. Oh, isn't that good? I mean, the God who could just crush you, I mean, like it was nothing. And he will have mercy on him. And to our God, return to our God, for he will abundantly pardon, not just a little bit. No, abundantly pardon. What does that mean? I mean, he wants to expunge. He wants to remove everything from your file, so to speak, your case, from your record, so that you don't have a record anymore. He will abundantly pardon you. But notice, we have to do something first. We've got to humble ourselves and we've got to forsake these things. We've got to seek the Lord while he may be found. And this is what we're doing. So that's why I encourage you, don't stop doing this with us because our God is a good God and he wants to respond to us here. Okay, so it says he will abundantly pardon. And then it goes on to say, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. So what is God saying there? He's saying you may not realize why you need to seek the Lord, why you need to forsake your ways, forsake your thoughts, return to the Lord, seek his face, you know, pray and press into him. Even this media fast for 40 years, well, why, why do we have to do this? Why is it all that important? For, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, nor are your ways my ways. In other words, you think that you're so smart and that you can just decide when to obey me and when not to obey me. You can decide when you need to seek me and when you don't need to seek me. And the Lord is saying, forsake those thoughts because that is a level of arrogance that ought to be embarrassing, really. When the creator of heaven is speaking to us and telling us what we need to do and we're wanting some, uh, I want some corroboration. Is there anybody confirming this? I need a witness. I need somebody to... uh, to validate this. Is this really true? Do we really need to do this? See, God says, listen, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. When I'm calling you to do something, it's because it needs to be done. And and how many of you know it's always for our good? It is always for our good. God speaks to us 
and does these things for our own good. So I want to walk through these things in prayer right now. And uh, you may be saying, uh, now we already prayed to seek God because it said that in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and we've already repented. We already turned from our wicked ways yesterday during the prayer and such. Yeah, but <laughs> did you know in a 24-hour period, oh, there's, there is often likely more sin that needs to be repented of. But not only that, folks, there are things we do that are displeasing to the Lord. We don't even realize we're doing these things. And we want to press into God so that we can become more and more pleasing. It's like the person that doesn't even realize they smell, but everybody else around them does. The Lord realizes when the stench in his nostrils is displeasing and it's no fun to be around us. And we want him to help us to get washed and bathed and to be clean so that he can snuggle up with us and we can both enjoy one another's presence. And so my thoughts are not your thoughts. God's saying, you need to get to the place where you say, look, if God says it, it's true. It doesn't matter whether I see it or agree with it. It doesn't matter if the whole world agrees with it. The whole world could vote against God. God's right every time. And so let's come before him right now. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Lord, I want to stop right now. And I want to thank you that you may be found, that we haven't waited too late. Lord, we haven't waited too late. You may be found right now. So, Lord, we seek you. We seek your will. We seek your face. We seek your purposes, Lord. Do what you want to do, Lord. We come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and we call upon you, O God, and we tell you we need you. We need you, Lord. We cannot solve these problems on our own. Our nation cannot solve these problems on our own. Lord, we've got enemies outside of our border just waiting for us to stumble so that they can take advantage because we've held such a strong a position of strength for so long. And Lord, I, I believe that it's your will to bring America to its knees and back to you so that you can strengthen America and the gospel can once again be represented as it ought to be. We can send this gospel around the world and we can evangelize this nation. Lord, I believe that is your desire. And so, Lord, I'm calling on you. I'm seeking your face that you would do these things on behalf of our nation in the name of Jesus. Friends, pray with me. Pray with me. Let's call on the Lord. Praise God. Bless the name of the Lord. And so, Lord, you said, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. We're calling upon you, Lord. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his ways, his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Lord, let me just tell you, if there's anything, whatever is in me, that's unclean, unrighteous, unpleasing to you. Oh, Lord, I forsake it. I don't want any part of it. Lord, I want to do your will in my life. I want to think like you want me to think, talk like you want me to talk, act like you want me to act. Lord, I want to get up when you want me to get up, go to bed when you want me to go to bed. I want to do everything the way you want me to, Lord, but I haven't always done it. So, Lord, I'm, I'm calling on you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm calling on you, Lord, that you would strengthen me to do your will, that you would strengthen me, Lord, to to do what you want me to do <laughs> in every area. I pray it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, your word goes on to say, let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So Lord, I'm returning to you once again. Lord, I've been doing it. We did it yesterday. Lord, this is a regular thing with me, but maybe not with everybody that's with me today. But Lord, I'm returning to you yet again. Every day I want to return to you. Every day I want to press into you to seek your face. And Lord, I thank you that you will have mercy on us. Oh, you won't give us what we deserve. Thank you, Lord, you don't give us what we deserve. You have mercy on us. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, that you will not just pardon, but you will abundantly pardon. Thank you for abundantly pardoning me. Thank you, Lord, for the cleansing by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. And Lord, your word goes on to say, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. I'm asking you, Lord, to help my thoughts to become like your thoughts and my ways to become like your ways in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. And amen. Praise God. Oh, boy, I tell you what, praying and praying from your heart before the Lord. I mean, it it takes some energy. It is it it taps into our emotions. It taps into every part of our beings when we bring ourselves before the Lord like this. And I encourage you to do it. Not a what my dad would call a mealy mouth prayer, a wimpy prayer. No, but let's pray from our hearts before the Lord. And by the way, if your heart is not hungry, if your heart is not thirsty, if your heart is not humble, then come before the Lord to say, Lord, help my heart because it's not the way that it ought to be. And be honest with him. He already knows it. And ask him to come and soften your heart and strengthen your heart and to help you to align your heart. (laughs) Our God is so good. He'll do it. Our God is a good God. And let me tell you, During these 40 days, I prophesy and declare your life will be changed because you press into the things of God. Exactly what it says here. You're going to seek God and he's going to pardon you. He's going to have mercy on you. He's going to bless you because he loves you with all of his heart. He sent his only son to die for you because he loves you so much. God is going to bless you. So don't you be discouraged. Let's press through this and let's know that we're not pressing into an angry God. We're pressing into a loving God who is trying to get us into a position so he can do a work in us and also through us and to heal our nation. Hi, I'm Jerry Dearman. Thank you for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, you can subscribe by clicking here. Or to watch another video, you can click here. Go ahead, pick one.